Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. It's a nice day outside, so we thought we'd be out fresco today. Uh, I've got a few questions from our Instagram following, so we thought it's about time we uh, have a little hack through some of those. Yep, if this is the first time you've come across one of our videos, we've been living in Australia for nearly a year and um, we came across um, as a family of four from the UK and yeah, we're really enjoying our time here and we chose to vlog um, a lot of things so that we could look back on it. And also, yeah, we've been trying to, you know, share our advice and help and information with everyone and the dog <laughs> uh, we also brought our dog with us so um yeah she loves being on camera and um for those of you that normally watch our videos you might not have seen her for a while but she's about <laughs> she's definitely about always here and there and everywhere in the background yeah so um yeah join us for some q a so first question is What's been our biggest challenge since we came into Australia? Biggest challenge? What do you think? Well, um, I answered on the Instagram that I felt like it was like financially was our biggest challenge because um, we came here not having sold our house in the UK and um, when you come here you have to buy everything from scratch whether that's new or second hand you still have to buy a brand new setup um, for your life here and yeah um, we went out with some um, friends last night and um, they said exactly the same as we had done that yeah you feel like you hemorrhage money um, when you get here like you're just having to pay out for everything and it's crazy well yeah it's everything you got cars driving licenses furniture like rent bonds or utilities or like your internet yeah new phones like it's never ending and yeah obviously we um had great support from our family back at home i don't think we could have done this without them no. um so we're really grateful to them and yeah we've just really worked really hard for the last 12 months um, we haven't, even though we went back to the UK, we didn't really have any holiday. No. Even when we were back in the UK, we were still trying to sell things um, and I was working. So, yeah, I just feel like we've really worked our butts off the last 12 yeah. months. I mean, obviously it's been worth it because we're kind of more settled than we were. But, yes, yeah, I say weekends are like a holiday, but not really. It's nice to have the time off. It's nice. The weather's nice pretty much all the time. But yeah, we've not had a proper holiday. Mm. So yeah, the big one was money and literally started again. Obviously, that's going to be a biggie. Yeah. Question number two was, had we been to Brisbane before we came to live? And what was the hardest thing about settling here? So, no. <laughs> well, our recce trip. Well, before we even had our recce trip, we never even contemplated coming to Australia, had we? Mm -hmm. So let alone even knowing where to go, which city to stay in. So yeah, we hadn't ever been to Brisbane before. No, we were fortunate to come on a recce trip. We were really lucky. And yeah, that was our first trip here, like you said. And then the hardest part about settling. So nice. It was hard the first time because obviously our first rental was only six months. So that was literally never really feel settled then, did you really? It's kind of like you was always in the back of your mind going, all right, got to find somewhere else to live. You can't really mm -hmm. relax. So yeah, that was the probably feeling so yeah fair, was it? we had all our stuff shipped over but we didn't really unpack anything because we knew we had to move so in terms of hanging picture frames on the walls and stuff we just didn't bother and then i think i'd said on the instagram also it was hard to settle until the kids felt settled because i was the youngest was still love oh, i don't like it and oh, i miss my friends and stuff like that but now it's like she loves it, I think, doesn't she? So I think as a parent, that's all you do is worry about your kids and if they're happy. And so until they're happy, you can't be fully happy either. And then you're a lot easier. Then you got to worry about the dog. Obviously the dog looks 
proper worried. <laughs> she's living her best life now, and she, she's always out in the garden, eating sticks upside down. So yeah. she's settled more than us, I think. So I think, and we love our new home. We're really settled here. We hope that when it comes time to renew our lease next year, that we'll be able to extend it because we're not in a hurry to go anywhere else. And obviously we need to wait until we've got our PR visa in place. So we're settled now, aren't we? Yeah, finally. So our next question was... What's been the toughest part of our journey? Well, obviously the big one is definitely leaving family and friends behind. That was a tough one, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And like we were just going back to on the last question, like if your kids aren't happy, you can't be happy. So yeah, that's tough when they're telling you that they're not happy and they want to go back to UK and they miss their friends and family and you just need them to give it a try so that, yeah. you know, they can't just give up straight away. Yeah, it's going to be different. You can't expect to just walk straight off the plane and like, yeah, feel all at home. It's going to be hard. Everything's different. Cultures are different. Climate's different. Everything's, yeah, it's just different. Mm. So, honestly, I think this whole journey, like even before we came here, we've been here nearly a year, but to get here also took nearly a year. So the last two years has been tough, like right from the start, you know, we're selling off as much as we can at home, trying to make some money to come out here. Then you've got the stress of bringing a dog over here, all of the timelines and costs with the dog and... See the video for that one up there. <laughs> um, and moving your stuff over here, like, I don't even know how we've got through the last two years. No, it's just kind of been like a blur, really, isn't it? It's... I mean, we were doing, watching the other night, we were watching back to our old uh, YouTube videos. That was quite funny, wasn't it? <laughs> we were just watching, like, back on ourselves, like, oh yeah, like, that's how it started off. We were sat in our little dingy, like, living room, uh, yeah. dark and yeah. looking miserable, wasn't it? Yeah. Right, next one. Um, so, the next question is completely different to the other questions, and that is how in summer here do you manage to transport your shopping from the supermarket to home without like frozen stuff melting and stuff? Very quickly. <laughs> but, but it's a good question because obviously it does get pretty hot. But I mean, it does last quite a lot. You've got a little gap between the car and the shop. I mean, most of the shopping centres are air conned anyway. Uh, you can get like the, the chiller bags and stuff like that, can you? You can buy them in the shops or if you're really brave, you could bring your Yeti or Esky with you. <laughs> Keep it in there. Um, most of the cars be okay. They've got air con in them. But yeah, it doesn't... I mean, if you live an hour away from the shop, yeah, you might struggle with your ice creams, might turn to mush but yeah just don't leave your shopping in the boot and then go off sh like yeah. shopping elsewhere yeah. it's like, not like the uk where you can go i'll just go to another shop it'd be all right in the boot for an hour because yeah, everything sweats even like the food <laughs> it's crazy and even like um like bread and stuff here in the cupboard like if you don't keep it in the fridge within like days it starts getting mold on it before it's even like before the packet's even been opened well same so. as like cereals and stuff isn't it like cereals you've actually got to break apart the next day because the humidity they like to all hold hands in the packet so you've got like <laughs> bash your cocoa pops in the morning to free them up yeah what do you think her yeah you don't like it do you how's your dog biscuits <laughs> do you want <laughs> The <laughs> uh, next question is, why is the dog holding my hand? <laughs> okay, the next question um, is, do we regret not selling our house in the UK? What do you think? <laughs> um, yeah, I would like the, the friends we met yesterday. They were just bit the bullet and sold the house within like a week, wasn't it, I think they said. Yeah, they managed to sell it really quickly. Yeah, so, I don't know. I think it'd be nice to sell the house. I wish we kind of were brave enough to do it. Mm, it's our choice not to sell it. Yeah. Um, 
but I like having it as a safety hmm. net because even though um, the visa that we're on is a guaranteed pathway to permanent residency, you'd think that would be enough to make me feel comfortable, but I'm not really a You're risk not a gambler, taker yeah. or a gambler, but I do love Vegas. Um, but in life, with like things like that, I need to be 110%, so yeah. Yeah, it'd be nice to eventually sell it because then we'll have a lot more freed up income over here yeah and i think i think we're happy where we are it's not like we want to stay renting because we want to try different suburbs or anything like we know where we want to live but it's just about if this doesn't work out for whatever reason and we have to go back reluctantly not going back <laughs> we absolutely don't want to go back but if we absolutely had to um then yeah it's really hard going back to uk and not having somewhere to live and having a dog um australia is much more friendly um <laughs> australia is much more <laughs> so, sorry i've had a look at this in that case you're just upside down <laughs> Um, Australia is much more dog friendly when it comes to renting properties. If you rent properties in the UK, it's really hard to find anywhere that will accept a pet, like a dog or a cat. Um, so, yeah, I just, I don't know, I just, unless we really, really have to, then until we get our PR, I'd rather just keep it. As soon as we get PR, gone. Okay, take. Um, so there's beautiful homes here that of course we would like to buy one day, but just not yet. Yeah. So this one is a bit of a funny one. I um, don't know if you watched our video when we went round the boot sale. I think it might have been come like spend a Saturday with us or whatever. I'll put a link to it up there. Um, and you treat yourself to a, was it a begonia? it's called it was i don't know it was a pretty plant with a pink flower and fully admitted to the man that i bought it from that i can't keep anything alive i don't even have any idea how i've kept our kids alive all this time yeah they've not been in the garden in a bowl so i think they've kind of stood a good chance <laughs> um and yeah so the question is um is it is still, it still alive? alive so we'll have a little pan round and it's over there. Doesn't look like it's cooked too bad. It doesn't look too happy. I think, I mean, I can see water floating on the top. I've <laughs> tried to water it. <laughs> it's either having a drink strike or put too much water in it. But, um, but it is still alive. It might be on its last legs, yeah. but it's still alive. And it was like five bucks. Oh, yeah, exactly, you know. It's done, it's done well. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of alive at the moment. Yes, um, I also have got given for my birthday a beautiful peace lily and I have tried to keep that alive but the lily went brown really quickly and some of the leaves started going brown. I kept it in the bathroom because everybody told me that um, they like the Humid, moisture right. yeah of being in the bathroom but that's when it started going brown and i don't know if it was because it didn't have enough daylight so i took it outside and put it on the deck um i don't know it still looks the same as when it was in the bathroom so if any of you that are watching are um green good, fingered yeah green fingered please give me some advice on what to do with my peace lily because i'm really hoping that the lily comes back yeah it's not looking great it's brown and just yeah drooped what should i do with it should i put it back in the bathroom should i leave it on the deck let us know in the comments if you um can help me Okay, so this has turned into a little bit of a gardening segment now, but um, we also wanted to show you what else is in our garden. Um, but actually, this one I didn't kill. It was already dead when we moved in. Well, I don't, you know, I'm not sure it was dead. I know cactuses can survive most things, but this one looks like it wants to <laughs> go up and round a bit. It looks pretty dead, but again, if you've got any advice on that cactus, please let us know in the comments because 
Yeah, I don't know if we can throw it away or not. I mean, it was already here when we moved in. Yeah, but if we can bring it back to life, then it, it can looks, stay. It just looks dangerous. Yeah, it does look dangerous, but I'd like to help it. So, yeah, I'd please. To help it. <laughs> please. <laughs> Any donations, please give it to the cactus. Please let us know um, if you can help the cactus that's living in our help garden. Help the cactus. <laughs> cactus gate. <laughs> Have a GoFundMe for the cactus. Or cacti. <laughs> So there you go, that was another Q&A stroke garden plant care video <laughs> for you and a bit of dog dog vision. Yeah, we hope you enjoyed that one. Yes, if you um, liked the video, please hit the like button and if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. It means a lot to us. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and following and... As always, <laughs> see you in the next one. <laughs>